Hi guys, welcome back. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to get your finances together. So one of the most simple things that I think you can do in order to get your finances together is to make sure that you are banking with a bank that does not charge you fees. So there are banks out there where, you know, you have to have a certain amount in your checking account. You can't start a checking account if you don't have like a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars or or whatever there's banks that charge you overdraft fees and and this fee and, and that fee and this fee and that fee and i just feel like you should not have to pay someone to store your money and i feel like there shouldn't be any credentials that you have to go through or any like qualifications that you have to meet in order to store your money somewhere. And typically like these bigger banks, the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America's, they typically charge fees um, with their checkings or savings accounts. But if you are banking with an online bank or like a local credit union, they typically don't have the same type of fees or any fees um, at all. So it's up to you to do uh, your research and see what uh, would work for you. If it's fine with you to not have a physical location, then maybe you should check out online banks. And there's a ton of different online banks. Um, a quick Google search can help you out with that. Um, so if you're fine with, with not having a physical location, you can go that uh, route. But if you do like having a physical location, and I will say there are like certain times where it does make it easier to have a place that you can actually go to get money like ATMs or like if you have questions, it may be easier for you to just ask them like face to face. Uh, so if you are more comfortable with that, then I would highly suggest checking out your local credit union. I have both. Um, I primarily bank with a credit union, but then I do utilize online banks for other things. Um, so yeah, it really just depends on you and uh, whatever works for you. But definitely, whatever you choose, make sure that your bank doesn't charge you money to keep your money with them. After you figured out where you're going to bank, I think the next thing that you should do is learn how to budget. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that every month I sit down and I create a budget and I decide or figure out how am I gonna spend my money this month? I do it monthly because my first uh, like real job that I ever had, I was paid monthly and it just, I don't know, it, it made sense to me and it was just easy to look at you know my money from like a monthly perspective. But ideally you should probably create a budget for however uh, you get paid or how often you get paid. So monthly, it can be bi-weekly, twice a month, weekly, um, whatever fits your like payment schedule, that's how I would create a budget for it or for yourself. And when you do that, you're capable of knowing like where your money is actually going. And I think having a budget can help you no matter what your income is. For a lot of high income earners, they think that like, it doesn't matter, I got money in the bank and they're just like swipe, 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 swipe. And it should really be like swipe or no swiping. If you're a high income earner, it can help you from like completely blowing through your money. And if you are more of a low income earner, I think that is really crucial because you need to know like exactly where your money is going. So you can see like, where can you cut out like any expenses that aren't really necessary. Or if you're in a case where your expenses are more than your income, then you can see like, wow, I need like another $40 a month to break even. That's just an example, but like an extra $40. So then you can know like exactly how much you need to make like in your next job. Like I need to make another like dollar per hour or you know, if my salary was this instead of this, then like I would be good. So it's just a way for you to know where your money is going and also learning like how much you make and where your expenses actually are. So no matter how much money you make, I think that budgeting can really help you. So you've got your bank set up and you've got your budget set up. I think the next thing that you should focus on is having a savings account. If 2020 has taught us anything, I think it's to expect the unexpected. 
And if you stay ready, you ain't ever got to get ready. Okay. So financially, that would mean having a savings account. And um, if you don't have a savings account, don't feel bad. Most Americans do not. Most Americans t cannot cover like a $500 emergency. So if that's also you, don't feel bad. Um, it's just something that we need to work on. And when you're first starting your savings account, it's okay to start small. So it's okay if like every time you get paid, you put $10 aside because what you're doing is creating the habit of putting money aside for a rainy day or for an emergency. So it's okay to start small. Um, but once you do get that habit, you know, put as much as you can. Um, it's okay to budget for that. Remember we said create a budget. Um, when I was building up my savings account, that's what I did. Like I set aside money in my budget, like, okay, 10% of my income is gonna go towards savings. And I knew that upfront, like before I even got paid, I knew that's how I was gonna spend that money. And that's something that you can do too. So you can do it like I did a percentage, like 10% or whatever, or you can just do a certain amount. And it's really up to you. So do what you can and the best that you can in your situation, but just start building the habit of putting away money. And then once that habit is there, then you you know you can increase how much you're saving. It's also good to work towards a savings goal. So for me, I would love to have like six months of living expenses saved up. I'm nowhere near that. I'm closer to like three months. Um, so I guess I'm like halfway there. But um, yeah, so it's it's good to have a goal. Um, at the beginning of this year, I had like a thousand in savings and then when the pandemic hit i was like whoa if i was one of the people who got laid off like i could like i like that could not support me for very long like my rent is more than a thousand so like it, it it scared me so over the course of the year like i set up a goal for myself like okay let's hit like this number and so for months i was putting money towards that until i hit my goal so for you, once you've built the habit of putting money aside, I would say that it's good if you create a goal as well. So maybe start with a month, put away like a month's worth of expenses. And you know, that can be your rent, that can be any of your bills that you pay, a car payment, whatever, put that money aside. And it's very important to learn like what you're saving for. So if it, this is for emergencies, don't take that money out for anything outside of an emergency. And you have to be like an adult about this and really learn what an, an emergency is. Another thing that you may wanna look into is what's called a high yield savings account. And that means um, like if you have a savings account with like Wells Fargo, it probably has an interest rate of like 0.001%, which means like for every uh, you know, if you have like $100 in your savings account, then at the end of the month, they'll like add money to it, but only like 0.001%, which is like really nothing. But a high yield savings account, um, they can, they're like significantly higher than that. Not a crazy amount, like you're not gonna get rich from it, but it's just better than a basic savings account. So it can be like 0.6%. 0.4% or, or anything like that. I've never seen one that's more than like 1%. I've never seen that. But um, it's just the idea that, that like they'll add money to your account for being in there. And I think mine is at the point where I earn like an extra $3 a month or something for it being in there. Uh, that may be high. It may be three. It may be less than that. I don't know. But it's like a very small amount of money. So it's not like a significant amount, but like it's better than earning like half a penny <laughs> on the money that's in my account. So I use a high yield savings account. That's what my emergency fund is in. What I was saying previously about like the three months living expenses, that's what I keep um, my money in is a high yield savings account. So that's something that you should check out and different banks have that. Um, I've primarily seen it with online banks. So 
again, a quick Google search, you can find something and they're really easy to set up. So if you are trying to get a savings account, I would say look for a high yield savings account. The next thing I think that you could focus on after you've uh, handled those other things is creating a sinking fund. And so if you don't know what a sinking fund is, the idea is, let's say, like this recently happened with me, I pay my car insurance every six months. So let's say the car insurance was $300. It was more than that. But let's say it was $300, right? So I know that this is coming up every six months. So every time I get paid, I would put like a little money aside. And every time I would get paid, I would just keep putting that money aside and it would add up and it would add up. And by the time I have to actually pay the car insurance, I already have that money saved. So I don't have to pay for it in the moment. Like for me, I pay that every December. So that's not coming out of my December paycheck. It's like I've been putting money aside for that since like July. So that money is already there and I don't have to pay for it in the moment in December. That's the idea of a sinking fund. So it can be used for things like car insurance. It could be used for Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, vacations, anything really that um, you're like working for that's like a, a, a reoccurring expense. Um, you can uh, create a sinking fund for that. And for me, I just use like a regular savings account with it because like the number's never really high. I would use a high yielding savings account if you are gonna put like thousands and thousands of dollars in it. That's what I would utilize a high yield savings account for. But if it's only gonna be like a few hundred dollars, then I would just use like a regular savings account that is like the same place where your regular checking account is at. That's what I do for my sinking funds. So that way in December when my car insurance is due, I just transfer it from the savings to the checking and then I can just pay it really easily. Another thing that you need to know if you're going to have your finances together is your credit score. Now I have made other videos talking about credit, credit scores and what they are in detail. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about it now but your credit score is really helpful if you ever need to open a new line of credit, such as if you wanted to open a credit card account, if you wanted to get a car, if you wanted to buy um, a house, like a mortgage, um, your credit score is even important like if you're renting. So uh, a credit score is really important. So if you don't know yours, you should find it out. And a lot of times like you may think that your credit score is bad and you're like sucking yourself out so you won't ever actually look it up. But if you do <laughs> look it up, it's like it, either it's not gonna be as bad as you thought or if it is bad, it's like, okay, this is not what I want it to be. But now that you know where it is, you have like a, a base and you can like work up from there to increase your credit score. What I use, well, there's multiple ways that you can find out. Um, there's different like apps that offer to check your credit score for free. Um, I use Credit Karma, that tells me what my credit score is and I like it because it also breaks down like what, like why my credit score is the way that it is. Um, so that's one place that you can go and I'm pretty sure like it's free to, to set up um, through the website, but wh wherever you go to get your credit score, it's, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is to know what your credit score is. After you know what your credit score is, um, you may see that it's lower because you have like, for example, high balances on your lines of credit. And a way that you can lower your credit score is to pay off some debt. So I think your next step could be to come up with a debt repayment plan. and. So you can figure out exactly what all you owe. Maybe you have credit card debt, maybe you have medical bills, um, maybe you have a car loan, maybe you have student loans, whatever. I would sit down and I would figure out what exactly do you owe? Like what do you owe as far as like credit card versus student loans versus medical bills? And then I would figure out how much do you owe for each thing? And then I would also figure out like what is the interest rate for each thing? Um, and then once you know what all that information is, then you can decide which one you wanna pay off first or which one you're capable of paying off first. 
Um, so there's different ways. Some people, they're more concerned about the overall balance and they'll pick like whichever one is lowest. Like say you have three different loans, one's five, 10, 15,000. Some people would just start with the 5,000 first because it should be easiest to pay that one off or the quickest to pay that one off. So some people do it that way. Some people look at just the interest rate. So if one interest rate is like 2%, 5%, 16%. Some people would start with that 16% interest rate, whatever um, has that as an interest rate, they would do that one first because the higher um, your interest rate is, the more you're gonna pay in interest. So it's really up to you. Um, mathematically, it makes more sense to start with whatever has the highest interest rate, but psychologically, it feels better to pay off the smallest one first because it gives you like, confirmation that it's actually possible to pay off debt because it's like oh i did one okay now i'll go on to the second one so if you need like that motivation to do it then maybe start um paying off the smallest debt but if you're already like focused and you don't need any outside like motivation then maybe do the mathematical mathematical way and pay off the one that has the highest interest rate first Last but not least, let's say that you have all these things that I've mentioned. You have, you know, you got the bank, you have the budget, uh, what, what else? You have the savings account, you have the sinking funds, you know, your credit score, and you have paid off all your debt, consumer debt, anyway. Uh, paying off your mortgages, that's a big one. So that's gonna, that's gonna take some time. But let's say you've paid off all your consumer debt. What else can you do? investing. I am not at a stage where I am like seriously investing. I'm trying to pay off my um, credit card debts first before I like enter that stage. But um, so yeah, investing is really important to think about because it kind of defines your future. Um, so what type of future are you going to have when you are in retirement age? Are you going to be able to retire? Or are you not going to have enough money? So you're going to have to keep working. I don't hear like a lot of people focused on investing and focused on their retirement accounts. And I think that it's really, really important to start thinking about that. The younger you start with investing, the better. Again, I'm not someone who uh, is really uh, advanced at that. So I'm not at a place where I can really give advice about it. I just know that hey, this is important and people should be doing it. So I wanted to include that in this video. Um, I, if you're watching this, you're probably not at that stage either. So it's okay, we can get there together. But just know like in the back of your mind, like, oh, you should be investing. Um, and I do think that even if you are uh, investing like small amounts, like that's better than not doing anything. So um, for 2021, I do wanna start investing like really small amounts. But um, after I pay off a lot of my debt, then I want to like, really like beef up my investing. So once I get to that point in life, then I'll start sharing videos about that. But yes, those are the things that I think that can really help to get your finances together and get you in a better spot with your finances and just start making better decisions. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and leave some comments down below. Let me know if you learned something. If you have something else to add, please share so that uh, everyone can learn together and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.